Uh, I will just uh, comment on a few areas where perhaps you didn't, where you, where you discussed a bit less. Um, you mentioned the New Economics uh, Foundation study. I was actually one of the authors of that report, so I'm sort of going to lean a bit on, on previous work here. Um, we defined, in, in, that, in that paper, we defined financial system resilience um, in the following way. Um, this was, um, the, well, essentially, essentially there's three different dimensions in, in the way we understood it. Um, firstly, that it should be, um, resilience should be about the ability to adapt, um, not just as, as uh, sort of move back to the, to the uh, existing or previous state of, of being. So it's not, it's not just about the ability to return to business as usual, um, but it's, it's about the ability to adapt and evolve and that's very important if you have a sort of Schumpeterian concept of economic development, which emphasises innovation, which em em emphasises uh, entrepreneurship. Um, and I think it's it's quite what I feel. I, I guess in the sort of post-crisis regulatory consensus, there's not enough emphasis on sort of the right kind of entrepreneurship, so sort of productive entrepreneurship. Um, rather more there's emphasis on how do you prevent too much financial entrepreneurship or the wrong kind of financial entrepreneurship. Um, but I think that's a, that's a first point I'd make. Then in, in regard to systemic resilience, I think this is, this is quite an, an important point. Um, the key issue I think really is that the financial system resilience should not be understood simply as the sum of the resilience of all the individual banks or financial sector actors. So this is the standard sort of fallacy of composition problem in, in macroeconomics. So if, if all the banks hold enough capital, they'll pass the stress tests and we haven't got a, a problem. What that misses generally is the interconnectivity problem between uh, the banking system and the shadow banking system and increasingly institutional investors, shadow banks in the, in the post crisis era um, and uh, so how do you how do you deal with that so so one one thing to do is to simply try and measure interconnectivity uh, of a given financial system interconnectivity both within the country between different types of financial institutions what's the connectivity between the banking system institutional investors the pension system uh, but then also international interconnectivity how vulnerable is our financial system to the global economy um, which, to some extent, I think central banks are addressing now. I mean, the Bank of England spends a lot of time looking at, you know, what's happening in China and Europe and how that might affect UK banks. Um, but, but a related point, I think, which which perhaps Dirk didn't discuss so much was this notion of diversity. Um, that, and I think Richard's Richard's comments alluded to actually that, essentially, I, I think the key point here is that there's actually a trade-off between the efficiency of a system um, and its its resilience and that trade-off is is around diversity so if you have a, a system with lots of different types of, of institutions um, competing with each other um, uh, it, it may not be very efficient uh, there may be lots of frictions um, but if there's a shock it may be actually more resilient because um, different actors essentially have different uh, uh, mindsets about what's actually going on in the economy and, and may react in, in different ways. So, um, it, you know, so, so a classic example of this, I would say, is if you compare the UK financial system, uh, which is dominated by one model, really, of, of banking, which is sort of rather large shareholder-owned banks, the tar their target is uh, essentially double-digit returns on equity every quarter is determined by the shareholders. As a result, they behave in a certain way. They, they target uh, big lo large loans, uh, mortgage loans, or, or slightly higher risk loans, which are again big loans to other financial institutions, loans to hedge funds or, or insurance companies, the buyer sector essentially. Uh, they're less interested in lending to small businesses where there's, the loans are small, so the return is small and the risk is, is high. Uh, as compared to, say, the German banking system, where actually you have a much greater diversity of types of lending institutions, you have you have some shareholder-owned banks, you have 
Commerce Bank and Deutsche Bank, but you have uh, the Sparkassen, which are sort of focused on the local real economy in general. You have um, a large segment of cooperatively owned banks. Again, they're not interested in quarterly returns, they have a different sort of goal. So the, the, the diversity of the institution um, can be important both in terms of what happens when a shock arrives, uh, but also in terms of supporting the real economy, actually. The, the, the incentives can be different. And I think that's a really important point, that when we think about financial system resilience, we think about not just recovery, but actually growth, positive growth moving forward. Um, at, 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 and that goes back to the earlier points I was making about um, the composition of financial institutions' balance sheets. How much is it real economy? How much is it simply uh, pumping up existing asset prices and essentially being driven by capital gains and rentier returns rather than productive returns? Uh, so the index that we developed essentially took into account these, these different factors along with financial system size. Uh, we also looked at the liability composition of banks. Uh, and actually that, the IMF study you mentioned has quite a nice liability uh, set of uh, uh, factors which you, can, which you can use. And we looked also at complexity and transparency of, of the financial system, which is clearly very important to regulators. The more complex, the harder it is to regulate, uh, the more one tends to get into this game of the regulations becoming increasingly complicated, so that, which actually makes, in some sense, it easier for the banks to game the system. Um, so you know, Andy Howland made this, this argument, uh, a simple leverage ratio might actually be much more effective than having ever more complicated capital risk weightings. Uh, the OECD, I think, has also okay. made this, this argument. So from a research perspective, I guess there, there might be something in, in looking at simplicity and complexity. Um, so I think I'll, um, I'll probably leave it, leave it at that. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah.